Hi, hello everybody, welcome to my channel, Scaredy Cat. My name is Cat. I'm scared. It's a lifestyle. So I've had a lot, a lot of free time on my hands lately. So I've been thinking about what to do. And of course, rewatching some of my favorite scary movies came to mind. And I figured I would share that with you guys. Now my favorite genre of horror movie is the mockumentary slash the found footage, specifically the found footage. Yes, I know it's overdone. And I know it's not always that good. It's usually kind of bad, partially because it's been so done. But here are my top five favorite found footage horror movies. Also, I should say this real quick. This may or may not have spoilers in it. It probably will. So I'm just going to say big ol' spoiler alert right away. If you have not seen these movies, I'm going to try and not spoil it. Like, I'm really going to try not to. I might slip up. So, spoiler alert. We're going to start at number five, which is The Gallows. The Gallows is about a high school theater group that is putting together a production called The Gallows, a show that is notorious in this community because of the fact that they had put this show on 20 years prior at the same high school and a student died due to a set malfunction. So this group of kids, specifically the small group of friends, decided they're going to sneak into the school through a side door that they know is unlocked all the time to sabotage the set, just to play a prank on everybody and to be jerks about it. They are actually caught by another cast member and when they go to leave, they realize that they are trapped and they are being hunted down by the ghost of the student that died during the first production. So this movie came out in 2015. So it was not a new concept of the found footage film, especially not in the sense that it was about dumb teenagers being dumb teenagers. But let me tell you why I like this movie and I'll be real, it's not a good movie. Like if you want to find a masterpiece of a movie, this isn't going to be it, but it is so entertaining, especially from the theater aspect. Because I was a theater kid and now I am a theater adult. I still love theater. I do community theater whenever I can. Of course, not recently, but whenever I can. And it was so much fun to watch the kids at the beginning of the movie, going through their warm ups, talking about their superstitions, and just like seeing how a high school theater company runs. So, yeah, it's really fun because of the theater aspect of it. I don't understand why they would do a show if a child had been killed during the process of it the first time around. Like it honestly just kind of sounds like a really bad idea. And if I was a ghost, like if I die during a theater production, knock on wood, that doesn't ever happen. If I did though, and they decided that they were going to do this show and a bunch of people were being weird about it and jerks about it, kind of like assholes about it, I too would come back and haunt them. So if I were to rate it on a scale of one to 10, I'd probably give it like a four. It's not good, but it is super entertaining. If you're with a friend group and you just want to chill and make fun of a movie and have like a couple of jump scares, because there are some good jump scares in it, not gonna lie, then I would absolutely suggest you watch The Gallows. Moving on to number four, we have Blair Witch. I want to clarify, this is not The Blair Witch Project, nor is it Book of Shadows. This is the sequel that actually makes sense and is not nearly as terrible as Book of Shadows is. So let's just clarify that right off the bat. So in Blair Witch, a group of college students decide that they're going to go out into the same woods that the first movie takes place in and they are looking for Heather Donahue. She was the director in The Blair Witch Project and she is also the sister of one of the characters in the movie. That might be my sister. So they go out, they camp, they look around, they have a couple of locals showing them around and they start to get lost and just walking around in circles, at which point a lot of supernatural events start to take place. So Blair Witch actually came out in 2016, which is 17 years after the original one. I really enjoy this movie. I actually love it. It was actually scary. It was entertaining to watch. It does not drag at the beginning. A lot of things actually start happening and pick up pretty much right off the bat. But while the first movie was very suspenseful and tense and honestly kind of stressful, this one actually moves more into the paranormal area. So I would say this one is, as, a, as opposed to like a suspense horror, is actually a paranormal horror. And I really do recommend this movie to watch. It's a good one. If you love the Blair Witch Project, highly recommend it. So if I were to rate this one, I would say this is probably more a 6.5. I'd say it's a 6.5 of the found footage. It's not a masterpiece, it's not great, but it is 
actually pretty well done. It's, it's fun. It's a good movie. And for number three, we have The Den. So The Den is about a graduate student who is doing a sociology project to get onto different chat rooms, one in particular called The Den, to talk to as many people as possible. She's trying to see how many meaningful conversations and meaningful connections she can actually make, or if these websites are truly just for really quick encounters and shady business. So she's very optimistic at first about the results, and then she comes across a user that's a little off. This user's a little bit aggressive and keeps popping up to talk to her, and she kind of brushes it off as just a weirdo until she sees this user murdered live. She goes to the cops, nothing happens, and then she realizes that this is not only going to affect her online, it begins to affect her in her life. So this movie came out in 2013, and I think it is one of the first ones to really utilize webcams. I know there are a million different ones now that use found footage as webcams in paranormal situations, but this one is supposed to be wholly based on the possibility of it happening in real life. So while this is an extreme in talking about like the dangers of the internet and strangers and that you don't know who you're actually talking to, it is possible because, I mean, we see people who, you know, get scammed all the time because your phone number is out there. People can find and dox your personal information and people even are weird enough that they hack baby monitors. Like, to scare the parents and the kids. It's really weird, it's really messed up, but there are people out there who have these skills and they do really terrible things with them. So is this an extreme? Yes. Did it make me really paranoid? Absolutely. I have been thinking about this movie a lot. It 100% lives rent free in my brain because last year I watched the docuseries Don't Fuck With Cats and if you've seen that you know how horrible the internet could be. So if I were to actually rate the den I would probably give it a rating of like 7.2 out of 10. It's not necessarily good, but for me it was because it scared the shit out of me. It made me super paranoid and I still think about it way too often. So if you want to get paranoid, if you want to see the possibility, the extremes of the internet, I would say watch it. It's actually very much of a roller coaster. There's so much that goes on with it and it's fun. It is definitely a fun one to watch. Number two, as above, so below. So in As Above, So Below, an archaeologist tries to finish her father's work in locating the Philosopher's Stone. Through her research and adventures, it leads her, her ex, and their cameraman to the Paris catacombs, where they hope it is located. So when they actually get to Paris, they get a tour guide and his two friends to take them into the catacombs and help navigate. And the deeper into the tunnels they go, they start to encounter a lot of eerie things and realize too late that they have entered their own personal hell. So what can I say about this movie other than the fact that I just love it? It is such a good movie. It's really not, but it is for me. I enjoy it. It's entertaining and it's so impressive how they actually made it. They were given permission by the French authorities to actually go into the catacombs because there's only like a mile or so that's open to the public. So they actually went into the catacombs. They had no light, no cell reception. Their walkie talkies wouldn't work. They were totally alone down there. It sounds absolutely horrific, but they were dedicated and they just did it. Like good for them. So the movie starts out in more of a realistic kind of scary in the sense that the catacombs are just creepy all on their own. So you get a lot of paranoia that comes up is honestly claustrophobic and it's disorienting not just for the characters but it's also kind of disorienting as a viewer to watch it to get lost in the catacombs with them you know they pass points that they've already been before they see a lot of weird stuff and as the movie progresses you get more into the paranormal supernatural aspect of it which of course then it picks up you get a lot more weird scares it's fun there's some jump scares it's very suspenseful though is what i will say i don't remember watching it and being like, boo, ah, you know? But I remember just being really stressed out because like you see it, like things happen, you see, you see things come up and you're like, oh no, Duh. But yeah, so it's very stressful, it's very suspenseful. It's honestly a good movie and it's not too long. It's actually kind of short. I think it's just like maybe a little over an hour or so. But it's really 
really good. So my rating for As Above So Below is just going to be a nice, beautiful, even 8. It is entertaining, the acting's not the best, I thought they did it really well, and you have to give them credit for willingly going into the catacombs day after day for months to film this. So yeah, I, I totally appreciate that, and it's just an entertaining movie. And of course, our number one spot has to go to the Blair Witch Project. So I'm sure you all know what the Blair Witch Project is, but I'm still going to tell you about it anyway. The Blair Witch Project is about a group of college students who are making a film, a documentary, about the legend of the Blair Witch. So they go to Massachusetts, to the small town where it takes place, they interview locals, and they go out to try and find where this legend came from. They try and do as much research as possible by going out into the woods where a lot of people say supernatural things occur. So as they go deeper into the woods, they end up getting lost and they start to encounter the Blair Witch. So this movie came out in 1999. You have to give it props right off the bat for totally reviving the found footage genre of horror movie. Because for a really long time, people stopped making it. And Blair Witch just did it and brought it back. So of course it's a classic. It's a, it is a drag to get through the beginning part. I remember when I watched this when I was a very little child, even then thinking like, yeah, I was creeped out, but it was kind of boring to begin with. But it is interesting and you have to appreciate how they filmed it. Just like As Above, So Below, let me tell you about how they filmed it. The directors wanted as much of an authentic, genuine feel as possible when they decided to make this movie. So they cast actors that were really good at improv and that's what the movie was. Like they gave them some like little scripts of where they wanted the dialogue to go. But other than that, the entire movie is improv. The only reason they even knew where they were going in the woods to begin with is because the directors would leave them little hints and clues on the trail that they were on, on where to go. They had a map and a compass so they actually had to find their way there to film and do the locations. Not only was the dialogue improvised, the events were too. Like the actors would know on this night something's gonna happen, but they didn't know what. It was so much that the directors would actually play, you know, scary noises outside of their tent at night to get as genuine a reaction as possible. One of the most iconic scenes, of course, you know that her crying into the camera, completely on her. She was actually scared and figured it was a good time to film and she did it. Another scene when they are running through the woods at one point, you don't see it, but you hear the character Heather yelling that there is something around they needed to run away from this thing that was like by their tent and we never see it. It was actually the director who decided to show up to scare them and he was wearing like white long johns and pantyhose over his head and stuff because he was supposed to be this tall, pale, lanky creature that was the Blair Witch in the woods. And the only reason we don't see it is because the cameraman was so scared and he was just running and he forgot to pan left to actually film the creature. Like they terrorized these actors basically and they pulled it off so well. I love it. Another reason why I love this movie so much is because of the marketing. It was genius how they did the marketing. They didn't market the movie, they marketed the legend of the Blair Witch. You know, the trailer was pretty straightforward. It was just like, oh, here's a documentary, whatever. Meh. But the actual marketing was all word to mouth from people being interested in the Blair Witch and finding out there was a, this documentary coming out about it. People didn't know if it was real or if it was fake. They put out actual missing persons flyers and handed it out to people. They put the missing persons reports in local newspapers. They made an entire website dedicated to the Blair Witch that looked like these college students made it. You can still see this website. I know it's been updated a bit since the movie came out, especially with the revival of the second movie, but it, it looked legit. So basically they didn't market this movie at all. Nobody gave a shit about the movie. People cared about the legend though and they wanted to know what happened to these kids and if it was real or fake or not. I'll just, I love it. I love it. And that's why Blair Witch is number one. Blair Witch will always be the number one found footage movie for me. You can fight me on it. It is never going to budge. So of course, rating the Blair Witch Project, it gets a whole whopping 15 out of 10. It is out of the water, just like blown out of the water. That's it, 15 out of 10. So there you have it. There is my top five found footage movies. I do hope that you check them out if you haven't seen them already. If you have seen them, go ahead and rewatch them. It's a great time, especially with the weather like this. At least today, it is eerie as hell. I'm definitely gonna watch a scary movie later today.
So if you like this video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below. Also make sure you hit the notification bell because I know that you know that I post my spooks every single Sunday, but I want your phone to know that I post every single Sunday too. You can also hit the like icon and leave a comment if you have seen these movies and if you haven't, if you just checked them out or rewatched them, let me know. I would love to hear about it. And of course, if you have anything that you want me to see or talk about or do, let me know. I would absolutely love it. I love sharing. Sharing is caring. Go ahead and check out my other videos too. I have a couple up already. Of course, we got one coming out next week as well. I have something really fun planned for that one too. It's gonna be good. And of course, follow me on social media. I am on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at underscore scaredycat underscore. You just wanna make sure that it has two T's. I'll see you next Sunday.